what does it mean to you when somebody says, I have these crystals, if you rub them, you'll get better. It'll cure your ailments. How do you react to that information? Is the first thing, really? Oh, I'll try it. Or how does that work? See, what's the first question you ask of the person who tells you this? And the question you ask is part of what science literacy is about. It's how do you, what level of skepticism, skepticism is almost a dirty word. Let me say, what level of inquiry do you bring to statements that others make to you? And I'll give you an example. I'm training my children, age 8 and 12, to be scientifically literate. They don't even know it though because I'm immersing them in things and they just have to figure their way out of it and they don't even know that they're subjects of these experiments. And because I'm, I'm, I'm specking a book related to this in my head. I got other stuff I got to do between now and then, but it's in my head. And so I look to see what comes of this. For example, my daughter, when she was 11, I saw a picture of Hannah Montana, a poster on a wall. And I went back and told her, I said, you know, I just saw a picture of Hannah Montana. It was on a poster. It was, a, it was huge. It was the size of a wall. I told her this. First, I wanted to impress her that I knew who Hannah Montana was. <laughs> Anyone 11 years old, any girl 11 knows who Hannah Montana is. So that was my first effort. But part of that was to tell her that it's a pop star and it was a huge poster. My daughter's next question to me was, how big was the wall? I said, it's huge, as big as a wall, but walls can be different sizes. So she did not have enough information to react to what I told her. So she came back for more information. Hmm. I submit to you that that's, science, that's a manifestation of science literacy. It's not how much science can you recite. It's not, do you, well, that's an aspect of it. It's not, can you... Uh, give the details of how your microwave oven works. That's an aspect of it, but that's not the most important feature. Most important feature is the analysis of information that comes your way. And that's what I don't see enough of in this world. There's a level of gullibility that leaves people susceptible to being taken advantage of. I see science literacy as a kind of a vaccine against charlatans who would try to exploit your ignorance. Why is it that you have this uncountable number of web pages given unto the apocalypse in the year 2012. And you look them up and you see what they say and it says, Earth, the Sun, the center of the galaxy will come into perfect alignment on December 21st, 2012 and the extra gravity is going to knock Earth off its axis and it'll be the end of the world as we know it. So, do you just believe that? Or do you ask questions about it? Your next question should... Your next question should be, how often does Earth the sun in the center of the galaxy align? That really should be your next question. The answer to that is, it aligns every year on December 21st. So, the statements that the world is going to end in 2012 because of that alignment are patently false, otherwise we would have ended a long time ago on some previous December 21st, and that hasn't happened. So, if you're not equipped to even know what next question to ask, I'm not requiring that you can calculate the force of gravity. I'm not requiring that you study Newton's laws. I'm requiring that you know how to ask questions. To inquire about the flow of information that's ready to enter your head and affect what kind of decisions you'll make about your own life.